Hello everybody, back out Bullion here. Now 2020 is the year of craziness. We all know that we are seeing some absolutely extraordinary times in the world, especially in the world of finances, markets and economies. First world, second world, even third world economies around the world are struggling, suffering, locked down, shut down. And we are going to be feeling the effects of what is happening in 2020, in my opinion, for a good decade at least. I think we're going to be feeling the austerity measures in the future. I think we're going to experience recessions and depressions in the nearer future as well. And it's going to be a pretty bumpy ride for the next decade, I think. And that is, uh, yeah, it's quite scary really to think about that. We are in unprecedented times, certainly in my lifetime anyway. Now in today's video I want to relate all that to gold and silver and what role these metals play, certainly in my forecasting, my planning for essentially the next decade because things are going to be pretty rough I think, uh, certainly maybe in the nearer term but uh, I think we'll still be feeling the effects for a long time. I do want to put my usual caveat to say that I'm not a financial advisor or planner, I'm just a guy who likes to talk about shiny things on YouTube and the things that I'm talking about today are my own thoughts and opinions as they relate to me and my situation. So any financial decisions you make are yours and yours alone having watched today's video. So 2020, big big year, lots of things going on as we know. I'm not going to say that C word, and it's not the really rude word, it's now the word that you can't say on YouTube for fear of demonetization. Um, but it's caused lots of economic issues, and that's the thing that I think has got me worried most. Of course there are other worries around uh, what is going around, but I'm not quite as worried about the longer term for that as I am for the financial impact of uh, these shutdowns and everything that's happening in the world right now. Markets are turbulent at best and they will go up, they will go down. Gold and silver will go up and they will go down. Short term is not really what you need to be looking at this. Certainly there are, there's two schools of thought. For gold and silver, long term is always, always best because you can pick and choose when you want to look to sell, when you want to look to release the funds that you've put into your gold and silver and you can transport your wealth through time. It's like a time machine for your for your money in your bank. You take a thousand dollars, you put it in metal now, and in 10 years time that thousand dollars in just re general currency might be worth fifteen hundred dollars. Inflation might have made that buying power only get you fifteen hundred dollars worth of stuff. But the gold and silver that you've bought you can then sell for fifteen hundred dollars or perhaps a little bit more if you're lucky and you will then have transported your thousand dollars through time. That's the nuts and bolts of it. That's probably the most fundamentally, uh, or fundamental thing that you need to understand about gold and silver investing. They are not investment products. They don't make you money along the way. They keep your money where it is and they keep your buying power where it is. Especially gold is a lot more fluid and liquid than uh, silver. Silver does have a bit more volatility so you can potentially get a little bit more on top uh, at the other end but you can also lose a little bit more if you are selling at a certain time. Now, with the financial markets being where they are, they're going to go up, they're going to go down. I am not a trader, I'm not a financial markets expert or anything like that, so <clears throat> who knows where things are going to go. All I can say is, uh, if you do have the luxury of having stocks and shares and things and you've seen huge crashes down, perhaps if you've got 401ks that are invested in that or pension schemes, SIPs and uh, you know lifetime ICEs and things like that, you know, things will go up, things will go down, hold on to things because in any big dips and recessions and depressions, there will be people who make a lot of money coming out the other end. That is just the way of the world. And in fact, some argue that is why we end up having these recessions. It's kind of why things are let, uh, you know, let go the way they are so that in the long term, these dips can fuel the rises and uh, people can make a lot of money along the way. I don't really want to get into the, too much of the conspiracy theories of that side of things, but I can definitely see why there'd be a lure for not uh, wanting these type of situations to happen and whether or not this is a uh, design situation I don't really want to get into but ultimately that's my message there don't worry too much the things that I'm more worried about going forwards are the impact on the shorter term so of course in the short term right now we kind of know that in the next three four months we should be moving out of where we are in the lockdown situations in theory of course you never quite know what is going to happen, but uh, that's then going to, it's going to take time to get things rolling again. There's a lot of people out there who'll say the economies around the world will kick into super overdrive and they'll go uh, as fast as the clappers and things will just 
you know, recover really quickly. There's a lot of things that people need to factor in and think about supply chains being, I think, the key thing. And that is where I'm going to relate it through to metals. When the economy kicks into uh, into first gear and starts going again, it'll be the small businesses which start going up again. You know, the bigger companies, they will have lag times. You know, the car manufacturers, the big factories out there, they will not necessarily be able to get their raw materials in quite as uh, immediately as smaller businesses that might do other things like service industries might be able to do. So uh, there's definitely things to factor in for that. And so commodities will have a lag time. And so when things start looking pretty good, you might see the fact that silver and gold, certainly from a mining perspective, you know, mines will be affected, refineries have been affected, mints have been affected. These premiums that we're seeing on gold and silver, physical gold and silver, will still be there for a little bit of time after. But as things progress, the short term is going to be really unknown. Now, I, I do want to sort of say that nobody really knows what's going to happen, but I've got a few interesting ideas of, uh, of things that I've heard and talked and thought about that I want to share with you guys here. So one of the big drivers for this stuff, for silver, is industry. And industry fuels prices for the most part. I think it's sort of 60, 65% of all the silver that comes out the ground is used in industry and it's used in electronics, car manufacturing, anything with a microchip pretty much, any computer, all of that. So huge, huge industries for silver. Now, of course, when they start manufacturing again, the demand for silver will go up. And again, with that lag, with that supply chain, I can quite easily foresee prices for silver going up even further. Now, that is going to be, in my opinion, paper prices, because these companies, you know, we're talking like Apple, Samsung, the big boys out there in the world, they will be buying by the megaton of silver for their manufacturing um, plants and uh, factories all around the world. And, uh, you know, that is that is quite a staggering amount of demand on the market. And at the moment, it's unclear quite how much physical stuff will be there. That could have a uh, follow through effect on, for example, prices of electronics going forward. Who knows? You know, there's just so much stuff that we just don't know about going forward. And I think that is another message I want to hammer home that if you are relatively new to the world of investing in silver and gold or looking to stack silver and gold, uh, there's nothing quite like it. Let me tell you, stacking one big bar on top of another big bar, it's a very satisfying feeling, uh, but it is also pretty unknown into the future and nobody knows. So when you're seeing all these videos uh, out there, people telling you what's going to happen, prices that are going to happen, remember that it's all, you know, it's all opinions. And that's what I'm sharing here is that I do think that demand for this stuff for silver, especially more so than gold, will go up quite significantly. Now, how much will that affect the price? I do think that there'll be a, a good increase in the price of paper silver, which of course we all know kind of fuels the price of physical silver. But with the combination of the higher premiums for physical silver at the moment, especially with this lag period, I can foresee a period of time where silver is going to be so, so expensive, both paper and premium wise, that it will almost be completely worthless to buy it because the premiums that you'll be paying for that stuff will just be in, it just eroded away as soon as those supply chains start kicking in, as soon as the big manufacturers start getting their silver in at a better price, the mines start opening again and producing it. And remember, you know, these mines, they need to make their money. They need to mine their silver. They want to open. And when they do, they're going to be in overdrive. They're going to be putting some overtime in. They're going to get the material out the ground. The refineries are going to kick it up to produce. The mints are going to be behind their targets, their schedules for the year. So uh, there's going to be a lot of supply in the long run. But in the short term, there could well be some shortages. Now, this all also depends on the various different countries around the world that uh, produce silver. Mexico being one of the key silver producers in the world as other countries as well, Russia, uh, South Africa, various other countries as well. And um, it, it does depend on how different individual countries come out of the situation that we're in right now and whether or not they have a faster recovery. So it could be that we have uh, you know, secondary tertiary waves of, uh, of stuff that's going on. You all know what I'm talking about. And that will have impacts on the supply of silver. So it's going to be a chop, choppy chip top. Uh, I'll start again. It's going to be a topsy turvy choppy road ahead is what I was trying to say. And uh, certainly for silver. Now for this stuff here for gold, where do we see things going there? The thing that's got me most worried, and I probably should have mentioned this earlier on, but if you're watching to this point, the thing that I really worry about is debt. And we saw 
the impact of the 2008-2009 financial crash. It had huge, huge austerity measures for countries all around the world and of course debts, you know, from, we're just talking in the UK, they, they skyrocketed and it's going to be even more so now. I think some financial experts are predicting 10 to 20 times as worse of a fallout than that crisis for what we're going through now. Of course, we're in unprecedented times with governments backing wages, with backing business loans, with backing uh, you know, self-employed people and spending obviously an awful lot of money on other things. So there's going to be some times ahead which are going to be really very hard. There's going to be austerity. There's going to be uh, there's going to be basically just you know huge amounts of. I think I don't I don't think we're going to get in hyperinflation, but I do think there's going to be inflation of currencies. And this stuff here is going to be your best friend when it comes to protecting that wealth and transporting it through time. And I cannot see gold going down a lot. There's a few videos and commentaries and news articles I've seen saying that gold will perhaps dip quite significantly. Might do in the short term a little bit, but I do think over time this stuff is going to be king and some of the big countries out there are going to want to start accumulating it again and we're going to start see uh, starting to see prices go up over time I think on these. And again, that is going to be partly down to inflation and values of currencies and don't get me wrong, you can certainly make some money on this, but I do want to finish with my original point here that for those of you who are new, what does all of this mean? Well, if you have not had any gold or silver in your possession before, now is arguably a good time to look to accumulate some. However, you do need to be very mindful and careful of the reasons why you're doing it and also how much cash you're going to be putting into it because with jobs being so uncertain right now, business is going to be coming um, back into the fold with uh, you know significant amounts of debt and loans and they might not be solvent for a long period of time. You know, people are going to have a lot less money. They'll have had 80% uh, of their wages here in the UK for you know three months, maybe more. So there's going to be less money to be spent out there. I think people are also going to be a lot more prudent out there as well because they understand that actually the brown stuff really can hit the fan and they need to have some cash in hand. So general spending, I think, is going to be down and uh, it's going to be a really interesting period ahead for the economies of certainly the UK and I think various other big first world countries around the world. So lots of things to consider and I hope everybody out there who is new to stacking gold and silver takes one thing away from this video that is gold and silver is not a get rich quick scheme. They do not earn you a lot of money if at all anything. If you're lucky sometimes you might get away with a little bit more cash than you expected but those cash profits it's really important to remember that they are, it, it's a conversion of currency value, it's a conversion of currency wealth. Please, please, please try and understand that. It's it's a not too difficult concept to understand. If you have a thousand dollars now, thousand pounds now, you buy some gold and silver, in 10 years time, that thousand pounds might have devalued. Uh, if you have it in gold and silver, you sell it, you get 2000 pounds and that can buy you the same amount of stuff as you could have got back in the day. So. That's my theory, that's my sort of thoughts on the subject, that's my ramblings on gold and silver uh, for 2020. Tough year ahead, certainly for 2020. I think the effects of uh, what we're going through now will be with us for a significant period of time over the course of the, uh, the 2020 decade. Stay safe, buy gold and silver if you can, I guess, but be very careful of the premiums on this stuff, silver. Gold, a lot less premiums on that, and it just is the best metal. And that's one of the misnomers because the, uh, the the price of silver seems on paper to be so much cheaper. Anyway, that is all we have to say today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions on it, so please do feel free to comment down below with your thoughts and opinions on the times that we are going to see ahead. How bad do you think this fallout will be? Are we going to see recessions, depressions? Are we going to see inflation, hyperinflation? good to know your thoughts and opinions. If you enjoyed the video, thumbs up on it, share it around on your social media, that would be very helpful. And if you want to see videos from us in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you'd like to see videos from us in the future with notifications, you get to see them instantly on your YouTube feed, then hit that alarm bell. Otherwise, that's it. Big shout out as usual to all healthcare and key workers out there. Thank you so much for all of your hard work. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay indoors, save lives. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching and please make sure that you like, share, comment and subscribe for more.